welcome to Theology Thursday, an ecumenical space for students to discuss matters of faith and theology. I'm your host, Connor Grubbs. I am your co-host, Ryan Mock. And I'm your co-co-host, Johnny Grubbs. Welcome to episode 101 Dalmatians of Theology Thursday. We had a live recording event for episode 100. It was very exciting. It was fun. I, I, I liked my biscuit. You, Johnny liked his biscuit. I, I mean, I, I liked my biscuit, too. But I also liked the company. My and parents were there. Yeah, most half the audience was Ryan's family. And my mom said she had lots of fun. So Well, so, I had lots of fun so as well. So it was well. a successful event. It no, was a success. I, I had mixed feelings about what it was going to be like with a live audience, but I actually really enjoyed it. Yes. I, I didn't know what to expect, but it was a lot of fun. I'm, you know, lo- I'm looking forward to doing that on the regs. I mean, not like all the time, but, you know, like a no, couple times a year. Yeah, no, we're thinking about maybe, uh, you know, biannually or quarterly or something, doing something for, like, college groups, yeah. youth groups locally in the area. Um, I, I really liked I felt I felt energized. Yeah. Like, when I have an audience that I'm speaking to, like, I feel more passionate about whatever I'm speaking about. And so, like, I felt really energized at, during the live episode. Like, I, I felt like I could go on and on and on. I know. I kept looking at the clock. Yeah. There's there's some great questions. And, <laughs> no, you did great. <laughs> um, it, it was a lot of fun. I, I really, um, I enjoyed it, and I appreciate everybody who came out. Um, and thank you to our Patreons. We had several Patreons sign up, you know, as a result of that event. And, uh, no, we're looking forward to, I, you can already tell, I mean, last week, we the audio has improved tremendously now we're still figuring out how to mix it now that we each have our own mics because we're used to all sharing one little usb mic so uh, we're learning how to use the new equipment but we are incorporating some stuff into it and as more patreons come on and support us we're able to continue improving the yeah. quality of the podcast we, we are evolving we are evolving and we want to continue to do that we want to always be improving but your support certainly helps now um patreons there's three tiers to it tier one gets the weekly after show where we continue the conversation for about 10 15 minutes um thus far we've learned that ryan likes asmr and that he has a tattoo um and so you're gonna want the deets on that so sign up that's that's an interesting show um that's five dollars a month tier two is ten dollars a month you get that plus a new monthly podcast that we're going to be doing um it, it, it was going to be Worship Wednesdays. We we did change it because we wanted to find something that made more sense for our Patreons. Um, and we thought Worship Wednesday is something that should probably be available to the general public. And we were like, well, let, what's something really niche that would be for our Patreons? So you're actually going to get some book reviews from us at the end of every month where we talk about what we read and, and just go a little deeper. Um, we think that kind of fits. And then... Um, Tier tier three, which is fifth, uh, actually twenty dollars a month. I kept saying fifteen dollars a month, and I apologize to those of you who went on and were like, oh, "Where's the fifteen dollars a month?" It was twenty. I'm sorry. Um, you get the weekly after show, you get the monthly podcast, and you also get all of our merch. So the T-shirt that Ryan and I are wearing right now, but Johnny's not. Lame. Um, I didn't get the memo. You well, we're, it, recording we're recording theology today. Thursday. What, what, what do you, you expect? What do you mean? So you're gonna get that. <laughs> Um, and anytime we drop new merch, we have some, some hats. Potentially, pretty soon, we might have some masks, you know, since it's COVID right now, with Theology Thursday on it. So, you will get these things sent directly to your door. Like, we're going to have some vaccines with the Theology Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so, that we made ourselves. Um, so, the homemade Theology Thursday vaccines. So, um... Yeah, no, there's a lot of fun stuff. It's a cool way to get involved. Uh, and if you don't do that, uh, we still love you, and we're really happy that you're a part of this community. So uh, 100 episodes, it was a cool thing to celebrate, and it's crazy that we are in the triple digits now as we make new episodes. We're going to be here for a while. That's right. <laughs> Episode 1,000. Let's yeah. do it. We're gonna be That's like, when I quit. We're going to be like 50 years old. That is when Actually, I quit. if we did, how long have we been doing this for? Two, three years? Yeah, just Three about. years, 100 episodes. So Hot that's... minute. Well, I think we started in February, whenever we started. So, yeah. I think it was February 2018. Yeah, that sounds about right. So, yeah, three years, 100 episodes. You do the math on that. Another three years to get us to 200. So, how many to 1,000? 1,000 divided by... 
We can't do math on the air. I'll ask my wife later. Um, so, cool. Yeah, uh, pretty exciting stuff. Thank you. Episode 101. Uh, one thing we are going to do differently moving forward is we're actually only going to do one sub point. We found that sometimes that takes up a, a good chunk of the episode, and then people just want to get to the meat of the episode. There's sometimes. actually been some episodes where the, the sub points were longer than the actual topic. So mm-hmm. um, we're we're gonna do one sub point a month. Month, no, not a month, an episode, which means that we will take turns. So today it is Ryan's. I, no, it's not. <laughs> I just Next got it all mixed up. You guys are throwing me off. Do you need another know. shot of espresso? I probably do. So. Uh, it's actually Johnny's turn to do the sub point. All right. So, <clears throat> so the pur- have at it. It's funny <clears throat> because the purpose of this is to, um, you know, not be as bloated. I'm going to try not to be because for me, this is like the whole GameStop fiasco has been like an ongoing story for me, like from a long time ago because I <clears throat> am a gamer and, Gamers I, rise up. and um, I've always had this pipe dream of, of which. I don't think that's what's happening here. I don't think GameStop's being saved by any means. They're just caught in the middle of this weird storm that's happening. But um, I've always tried to believe in better things for GameStop as a company. Yeah, you know. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, like the culture is really toxic because of the way that the executives build um, built the company. That's a whole thing. I, I won't get into it because again, we have time. Uh, I, I uh, our local GameStop, which they actually just did a clearance sale and and moved the location t- into the mall. But I always would try to be really nice to my GameStop employees because th- their working conditions stink, and that's the whole thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, can you give us an explain like I'm five rundown of what's happening with GameStop with the stock part of it? All of it. Okay, yeah, let me. That's what I'll do. It just real quick. Okay, so there's a thing in GameStop called the Circle of Life where basically. Your, each store has to sell a certain amount of, of pre-orders, a certain amount of uh, used merchandise in particularly, because they get that for X amount of dollars, as you know, like four cents, and then you sell it for, they sell it for like a huge profit margin. And so there's all this pressure on on uh, GameStop employees to push things, to make the cu- customer feel uncomfortable. It's, it's, a, it's a very toxic situation. And the company, the employees have a lot of good suggestions that I think if GameStop followed, um, they would be in good, in good, in good place. Right before COVID hit, <clears throat> Reggie Filziami became the chairman of their board. Reggie Filziami is a former CEO of Nintendo of America. He had this great idea of, well, if, if, if more games are going digital, if it's hard to sell uh, games right now, what if we made it more of a social place? You could pay to like play Magic the Gathering there. You could also pay a certain price to play a game, for example. And... In the, in the store and try it out, and then you would only have to pay the difference to keep the game and go home with it. So this was a really cool thing because people might play, like, they pay, pay five bucks to play a game, but then they don't want to do it, and that's just five bucks in their pocket, you know. So anyway, it was a whole thing. He had this great plan, but COVID happened. You're not going to make a more social game stop, right? So... And, and GameStop was on borrowed time right before Reggie came. They thought when Reggie came, they were going to save GameStop. And Can I ask a question? Did they implement any of that stuff before COVID hit? In two stores, they did. Like, there's one in California. You, you can, if you look up the new GameStop format store or whatever, I don't know what search key you put in there, but put in some keywords and you can actually see a tour of these GameStops was on it, YouTube. Was it working? I mean... I don't know. What was the response? I don't know. It was, this was right before COVID hit. It was hit. right before COVID hit. They didn't really get a chance to take it off the ground. Okay. I feel like it was would work. I really do. Um, uh, as a gamer. I'm not, but I'm not saying that for sure. But I, I feel like it would work. Um, but anyway, that's the whole thing. And they got into selling merchandise, which is something gamers are collectibles. Anyway, bottom line is... Um, he was going to try to save the company. Now they're at a standstill. And they were already declining as a company... And so now they're just sitting there wondering, okay, well, what are we going to do? And a bunch of investors were looking at GameStop. They were already looking at pulling out anyway at some point, but they were just like, you know what? Let's bet against GameStop and let's let's pull out our shares and let's just let's just give up on GameStop. And so a lot of big investors were just going to let GameStop die, um, cut their losses, and you know invest elsewhere. Well, a bunch of people on Reddit were like, let's let's band together. Let's use collective wealth to drive up the price of this stock 
and keep uh, GameStop in play in the stock market. And so they did. And all of a sudden, uh, these wealthy investors that pulled back were now bleeding uh, billions of dollars <laughs> in losses while they were profiting off of those losses. I don't fully understand how it works, but that's how it's been explained to me. So, and I, there's, it's a little, this is the explain like I'm five version. Right. And so it's so much more complicated. I don't understand the stock market, but I, I picked up on the story last week, like halfway through the week. And what it seems to me is is these these really these hedge fund owners they're trying to make a quick buck, and so they they make what they do is they make a company look like the the stock is going down in price, which would cause retail investors like normal people those are what we call retail retail investors to sell their stock. And for some magical way this works, uh, hedge fund owners come out on top. And what this is, is this is a form of market manipulation that hedge fund owners have been doing for decades. Um, and really what has happened is, like these Redditors, it's kind of a meme right now, um, <laughs> figured, figured out that this was happening with GameStop. Um, because usually this is covert. This happens under, this is like under the table stuff. Uh, but this came to light by one redditor figured this out and told everybody else, and so told everybody to hold their GameStop stock, uh, hold and buy more, and make the price go up. And this hurts the hedge fund owners right. a lot by, as as Johnny pointed out, millions, billions of dollars. And so this really, it's not even it's not even really about GameStop right. at all. It's more about the fights between these redditors and these hedge fund owners. Um, and it's a way to stick it to the man. And there's a lot of irony here because now these hedge fund owners are calling for the government to have, like, regulation. Uh, but the irony is that these hedge fund owners have been manipulating the market for years now. And now they want, now they want the government to regulate the market so that Redditors can't manipulate the market. Um, so it's really funny. I tried. I, I really like this meme. Um, I like the whole idea of, you know, sticking it to the man here. Uh, and so actually on, I think it was Tuesday night, I tried to buy a uh, GameStop stock um, and I, I, I opened up a Robinhood account. And they like, won't let you. And then I, and this is when you still could, but my application process wasn't fully complete. So I'm like, OK, tomorrow morning I am going to buy GameStop stock. So the, the next morning I wake up and I hop online and lo and behold, Robinhood has prevented you from buying GameStop, GameStop stock, um, which is wild. That's they're, 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 they're fiddling with the market. What it's done is it's revealed that the system is, is really rigged for the wealthy. Yes. You know, it, people say, well, invest, even if it's a little bit. If you're young, use, use a service like Robinhood to put some pennies in the stock market. Mm -hmm. And that was never about us the whole time. Yeah. So it's it, just about the rich. Yeah, and so it, it is a pretty interesting thing to 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 see happen. I do some, think that there's a, something a little bit symbolic about the fact that it is GameStop because there are a lot of <laughs> redditors that would like to see the company succeed, like myself. Not that that's going to happen as a result of this. In fact, I think that in the end, it's they're going to decline maybe now at the same rate they would have before. But unless they can somehow bounce back it's, the COVID it's, thing. It's more of making a statement. And one of the things that I've, I've, I've also seen through this is this is one of the few things that it seems conservatives and liberals have united on. There are big uh, uh, um, people from both sides who are speaking out against this, like like this, that what is happening is, is showing what's wrong and flawed with the system. That's what I've noticed, at least uh, – looking at right. the story the only the reason that there's still a little bit of division there is because people will say well the reasons why it's flawed are different for different people right mm -hmm. there are some liberals who are saying well uh oh these poor hedge fund owners and they're right. uh, yeah. you know, so but a lot of people are uniting around the the commoner if you will and saying hey if that's if they're over here manipulating the market for gain why can't they do it in their own creative way you know every, everybody's yeah you, you know, you got creative and you did something that made your money. That's all they're doing, you know? So. Yeah. Nice. I haven't been to a GameStop in a very long time. But 
Yeah. Uh, the only the only thing that really pops up in my my mind with GameStop is when I was younger, going to GameStop and buying a new game or whatnot, but also bringing my old games back to GameStop to like trade them in, you know, or or sell them back to GameStop and get in like fifty cents for a game. Yeah, and that just made me very sad. <laughs> yeah, it's um, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's pretty interesting. Um, and uh, I I'm for the redditors. I yes. I think it's great. Oh, yeah, I think yeah. it's hilarious that this started on Reddit. I yeah. mean, it's just it's just great. Um, well, now to move on to our topic for today, very controversial topic. Um, I'm glad that we're talking about it though, because I think it's really important, and it probably shouldn't be as controversial as it is. Uh, so we had a question from Zach who asked, can Christians support Democrats? I believe he said, can Christians follow Democrats? But we're just going to talk about supporting, voting, you know. Uh, I, I feel like there's a short answer and a long answer yes, here. Yes, yes. Uh, and the long answer is necessary because uh, for us sitting here, the short answer is, is enough. It seems rather obvious. But this has become so entrenched um, in... American evangelicalism that it merits a longer discussion. So so short answer first, can Christians vote for Democrats? Can Christians follow Democrats? Yes. Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes the short answer. Yeah, that's the short answer. That's I one think word. the short answer <laughs> should include a theological reason. Right. So before you, you t- turn off the podcast, <laughs> um, because I know for a lot of people it's like, okay, well, we're done. Please hear what we have to say because we're actually going to scripture. This is, it, it, by the way, we're not even saying that all of us here vote or support or follow Democrat, uh, because, you know, we we don't. That's not what's represented across even the three of us. We're just answering the question that was asked, and we want to show you why, according to scripture, we really need to rethink how we approach politics. Yes, Johnny. Okay, Romans ten nine says this. I'll give you the New Living Translation. It says, If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So, that's how you are a Christian. So, you're not a Christian by your voting record. Correct. Right. Yes. And and that is so important of just going back to the basics of, of this is how you are saved. And it seems almost like demeaning that we'd have to bring that up but i have seen and heard so many people say you cannot be a true christian you cannot be saved if you vote for democrats and what's a fair debate that we'll never answer on the show because we don't want to be partisan in any way but like what's a fair question is should you know yeah that's that's up for debate should you vote republican should you vote democrat as a christian that's a that's a discussion that we should be able to have civilly with one another but but can the the short answer is yes because your Christianity isn't d- dictated by that. Yeah, it's not. It's not dependent on what political party you associate with. So, yes, and and I think the conversation should you vote a certain way it, that that needs to be had. That's an important conversation. It used to be but, had more civilly in the country, but there's a right. whole history that's led to this moment. <laughs> yeah, and we, we just have to understand that our salvation is not tied to that. Um, mm-hmm. And unfortunately, a lot of people are acting. As though it is. Now, I'll say one of the reasons that people, that we can get into a little bit here, I I think we can do this without being partisan. By the way, Jesus was nonpartisan, is the pro life issue. Because a lot of people go immediately to, well, you can't support Democrats because they support abortion, they're pro choice, and you're supporting murder. That became like the big thing that people would point to as, well, the reason that I'm a Republican, it's not because you have to be, but it's it's about pro-life. Um, so I, I, I think that's a fair point. That is an important issue, right? I mean, and by the way, we are all pro-life here um, and holistically pro-life, um, meaning we're not just anti-abortion, Um I, we believe abortion is murder, that it's wrong, um, but we believe that as the church, it is our responsibility to be pro-life in every aspect. Um, from birth till death. From birth till death, and, and, and quality of life is something that we should care about as Christians um, for both uh, 
mothers, fathers, children, everybody, every life has value in every stage of life. Yeah, and, and that whole holistic approach would include, too, I think, and we talked about it before, and I don't want to get on the rabbit trail of just this issue, but including mothers who have made that mistake, yeah, you know, yeah. um, post-abortion counseling. We need to have compassion in this area. Yeah, and, and including medical professionals who have been involved right. in this, mm -hmm. <laughs> including Democrats who support it, <laughs> you know? Right. Like, mm -hmm. these people matter to Jesus, right. and they should matter to us, and I think we can really get into the habit of demonizing people, um, and that's not to downplay the issue of abortion or act like it's not a big deal, because it is, it's important, but um, we... we I think I've seen a lot of Christians get into, or people claim to be Christians at least, um, get into a pattern of uh, not seeing people's humanity or their dignity or their value just because they have a difference of opinion. So I don't know how much longer we want to stay on the pro-life thing, but I, I'll just add this. It's an important part I, of it. Right? I know. It is a very important part because it seems to be kind of the sticking issue for a lot of people. But I just want to say this. I'm not, I'm not one. I'm not claiming to be one here when I say this. I'm just saying that I know several pro-life Christian Democrats. Okay? And that's part of the problem is simplifying this issue so much of, of making it black and white. Of Like, you cannot be pro-life and be a Democrat. You cannot be Christian and be a Democrat. Politics is a lot more complicated, and as you love to say, nuanced, <laughs> so, um, than we tend to make it. I'm going to go ahead and give a hot take here, and I, uh, I hope we don't get canceled, but uh -oh. I, 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 I have we to... go. <laughs> but I mean, okay, let's think about this for a minute, okay? There, there are those who die hard supported Trump, and we, we can talk about that. There are many Christians who said, you know... Well, I held my nose when voting for Trump, right? I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't happy about it, but I, I, I couldn't support Hillary. I understand that Hillary was a, a pretty radical herself in, in, many, in many ways. And so I understand that position. Um, but still, you held your nose. You went up there and you voted for Trump because of the policies that you appreciated. But you held your nose at some of the immorality and stuff that he represented, right? Yeah. You did that. So why why can't you do that the other way is my big question. Why can't you go up to – why can't – like many of our black brothers and sisters voted Democrat. Many of them are also – who are part of the evangelical church pro-life. So they walk up to the voting booth. They hold their nose at the fact that their candidate supports this thing they don't agree with, but they vote for them for all the other reasons that they care about, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so, so it's it's a yeah. most predominantly black churches in the U.S. have congregations that vote Democrat. That does not mean that they have congregations that are pro-choice. Yes. You know, so if we're if we're going to demonize any Christian who says that they're a Democrat and say, oh, they're not true believers, there's there's an underlying racism to that, really. Yeah, when you get to yeah, when you get into that issue, you're basically saying, you know, anybody that votes Democrat is dumb or immoral. And I think it changes your perspective when you start to have these conversations with people who are like, well, um, who start to explain why they vote the way they do and, and why they believe the way they do. And that's that's really the key that we're getting at here is having conversations with people who believe differently than you and being open minded, trying to understand that these issues are a lot more complicated. There There is a whole pro-life democrat alliance now they're a minority in the party i'm not saying that uh they have a huge voice but i am saying that they exist and we and and people tend to talk about it as if that's not even a possibility you know mm -hmm. right yeah of course it is and i think that that the other thing that we have to look at and the holy post has done a great video of of this and uh david french has written several articles about this but there is no direct correlation, at least at the top. And this is where you can really, I mean, as a, as a believer, mix and match, <laughs> you know, who you vote for. But there's no evidence that at the top, who you vote for has any direct correlation with the number of abortions that occur in the United States. And, and in fact, and I, again, I don't think it was because of anything President Obama did, but um, numbers drastically dropped under the Obama administration. And I've continued to steadily decline. They didn't st uh, stop declining, but they slowed down in their decline under President Trump. Again, I don't think that had anything to do with him. 
Um, but just historically, this is the trend that we see. And so what it tells us is there is no direct correlation uh, between who you vote for at the top and, uh, and the number of abortions that take place. And honestly, part of what I think I'd probably accredit that to is I, I've you've seen a steady rise in Christian organizations that raise awareness about the reality of abortion and then offer practical help to people. Ministries like New Life Solutions, there's a bunch of them. And as that's happening... Um, and, and also, I mean, there's there's so many factors that go into yeah. that. People not wanting to have kids. I mean, there's just lots of things. The yeah. gen- general principle, though, is if you uh, give people more options besides abortion, they are going to take those other options as a general principle. Um, right. And and we get so focused on um, out, outlawing and all these things. Not not that we shouldn't want it to be illegal. We do, we do want abortion abolished. Right. But if... if our only focus, again, that's the difference between being anti-abortion and pro-life, is like while we fight for that, we also let mothers know, hey, there's options, okay? There's options for you to keep your baby. We will help you. We will be there. Um, and it's a common criticism against the pro-life movement that, well, you don't care about the mother, though, if she does keep her baby or if she doesn't. And and we only care about life in the womb. Once you're out of the womb, then we don't care. Right, and we have to. We have to care. We have um, to and, be I, and I know lots of people who are, are fierce advocates in the pro-life movement that, that don't think like that, who do approach it from a holistic perspective. But I'm just saying we have to. It's That's the gospel, okay? Uh, it's not just anti-abortion. you know, abortion. It's never, in, in fact, I mean, the gospel is never just anti-sin. It is pro-righteousness, <laughs> you <laughs> yes. know? Um, and, and I think anything that's just anti-sin, that's called legalism. Um, and uh, pro-righteousness, that's, uh, that's being saved. That's a relationship with, with God. Um, so I'm trying, to, I'm trying to find a quote here. But one thing I'll say while I'm thinking about it is, um, you know, I think the common conception is, of course, Christians can't vote Democrat because if they vote Democrat, when they have the blood of the unborn on their hands. And historically, that is just not true. The, the numbers would not indicate that. Yeah, mm-hmm. Your vote did nothing for or against that issue. But what you do with your life, that's a different story. Yeah, and that's the thing is I think a lot of people uh, use politics as this like kind of easy ticket out of, well, I'm going to vote you know, every time there's something to vote for, and I'm going to vote a straight Republican ticket, and I'm done. You know, like, what are you actually doing outside of that for mothers, for, you know, voting is not, it's a very small, small part of how you actually address these issues. You have to address them in day-to-day life, in relationships, right? And um, I like what you said earlier about how, you know, as Christians, as we approach these issues, we actually can, can kind of vote a little bit of both ways. I think that's super important uh, of people a lot of times just because of this one track mindedness of just voting a straight ticket i think it's important for us to do the research on you know local government Mm -hmm. and you know what what people actually have power over things like that and what that would lead to is you oftentimes you're probably going to vote a little bit democrat a little bit republican a little bit third party and we don't want to do that because it's it's very time consuming, right? <laughs> um, but we should, as good citizens, right? I mean, I think, yeah. I, if if you're gonna vote, it should be informed. And I I never I rare I cannot think, especially nowadays, of a scenario where voting a straight ticket is a responsible way to vote. Mm-hmm. Um, so do your research understand what branches of government, what positions of government actually affect which spheres of life and 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 vote you know um but realize that a party affiliation um has nothing nothing to do with your salvation Mm -hmm. by the way also jesus wasn't a socialist nor was he a capitalist those things did not exist back then uh the bible does not tell us really anything about economic policy so just even beyond abortion uh the left and the right have different ideas on how to handle economics the bible doesn't tell us anything about that if we were going to take the bible uh to its max here on this uh we would advocate for monarchy 
I think, uh, as in the, the Old Testament, um, but we don't. The Bible does not advocate for a constitutional republic or a democracy. It doesn't talk about any of those things. Um, so does Jesus want you to vote Republican because of capitalism equals good? Doesn't say. Does, does, does Jesus want you to vote uh, Democrat because... I don't know, capitalism bad or whatever, you know, whatever stereotype generalization, you know, you could throw at you. The Bible doesn't address it. What the Bible does address, though, is the kingdom to come. And I think in how we vote and how we approach um, anything political, we need the, 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 the end game is mine is that we're doing it with kingdom principles. And when you stitch your politics to your faith, you, you are creating a new religion in your heart. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, we've seen that. We've seen that in the past uh, four years. We've seen in the past really twelve years. <laughs> yeah. You know that that people are were were forming this new ideology almost by stitching things together that weren't meant to be bound together. I finally found this quote. This is from the Holy Post. It says, "If Biden wins, this was before the election. <laughs> if Biden wins, the church needs to vocally advocate for the unborn and for religious liberty." If Trump wins, the church needs to voc vocally advocate for the immigrant, the refugee, the poor, civility, and honesty. The only common denominator is the church needs to continue being the church. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And, and 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 that's the thing is there is there's so much fear, man. I mean, like of and tying politics into bad eschatology and everybody just like calm down <laughs> and be the church like follow jesus and love people because i, I just i keep thinking of this verse i believe it's first peter 2 7 it says and i've talked about it on the podcast before but i keep bringing it up it's such a simple verse but it's such a a, a pertinent to our situation is fear god honor all men love the brotherhood honor the king and it's such a simple principle, right? Um, but people say, yeah, but, but we're, we're about to enter into such great persecution, which, by the way, you cannot call what's happening now persecution. Mm -hmm. That is disrespectful to people who are actually experiencing persecution, actually being killed for their faith. Okay? But even if all of the fears that I've been hearing are true, and we are about to experience the worst persecution we've ever experienced. We're not allowed to say the name of Jesus, which, by the way, nobody can stop you from saying the name of Jesus. Uh, or people are gunning down our doors. Even if that were true, Peter wrote that verse. He wrote this letter about being peacekeepers to a church that had just seen Paul the Apostle executed by the government. And had been blamed for all sorts of terrorism that had happened. And they all had targets on their head. They were actually experiencing persecution. And nonetheless, he talked about honoring the king. He said, fear God, honor the king. A lot of us are fearing whoever's in charge right now. Or, or anybody that's, that's different than what we think is the right thing. The only person we ought to fear is God. And regardless of who sits in any office, the Bible actually tells us to honor them. We're going to talk about this more from a strictly spiritual standpoint on Wednesday, but I'm, I started working on my message last night for Wednesday, and we're doing a series called Free People about what true biblical freedom looks like. And one of the big things throughout the series that we're really going to emphasize on Wednesday is if your freedom... If you're afraid of your freedom being taken away, it's coming from the wrong place, and it's the wrong kind of freedom. It's not the freedom that you have in Christ. Because if you if you feel that you're truly free, or that you're truly free in Christ, no one can take that away from you, even if they put you in shackles, even if they beat you or kill you for your faith. Nobody can take away the fact that you are free in Christ. You have true freedom. And so, like when you look at this past year, and everybody was afraid of their freedoms or were demanding their rights. You don't have to fight for a freedom that's already been given to you. Right. <laughs> Nobody can take that from um, you. We have freedom in Christ, and yeah. it's true freedom. It's not the, the, the kind of freedom that any political society can give you. And that's all that we need to be fighting. For, and, and we don't have to fight for it, but that's all that we need, right? That, need, right, that should right, be sufficient right. for us. Yeah. And so for you to go out, out the guns of blame, well, they're taking my freedom, and I refuse for it to be taken away, that's the wrong kind of freedom to fight for. Yeah. You need to just live in the freedom that you already have in Christ. 
Sorry, that was my pastoral soapbox. No, that's really good. Um, any other thoughts as we kind of close out on this? No. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's look, it's a very controversial subject, but I think if you get anything out of this, it's one, your political affiliation, how you vote, is not tied to your salvation, uh, and to be open minded, like think of these things in a nuanced way. Um, and just don't have your identity tied to any politician or or any party. Have it tied to Jesus Christ, um, and and the gospel. Yeah, and don't assume that people who have nuance because I've seen this happen a lot. It's like people. Um, I, there's a lot of conservatives that I follow that have these more nuanced views, right? You know, and I think I would consider myself largely conservative. Um, it's easy to hear us even give an inch, right? To Christian Democrats, they're leftist. Mm. You know, they're right. you know, can't don't yeah. do that to us. That's not fair. <laughs> you know, we're trying to think across the entire spectrum um, so that we're being biblical, so that we're yeah. we're not excluding people that Jesus is inviting in. Yeah, no, there are so, definitely things on both sides that line up with the Christian worldview, and don't lose the ability to see that. Right. Yeah. Cool. Well, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah.